Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Azus Rog Swift PG259 QNR. This is an eSports 24-inch gaming panel from Azus, which features a multitude of interesting highlights to it, not least of which is a 360 hertz refresh rate, which I'm not demonstrating here. More on that later on. And the thing that interested me the most is it works with NVIDIA's reflex latency technology. And I'm going to be showing off that technology and doing a separate video on it because that is one of the most interesting things about this panel. The main selling point is obviously that it's a 360 hertz display, 24 inches, 1080p, IPS panel, one millisecond response time. And it's designed to basically give you an ultra fast, crisp and delicious view if you're playing the right sort of games that are capable of running at an FPS which is near the 360 hertz rate. Obviously that requires you to run games on low to medium or high settings depending on what you're playing. Games like CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, those sorts of games which don't require massive amounts of power but are able to put out really high frame rates. If you are playing those sorts of games competitively or want to get the edge over the competition, then the Rug Swift PG259QNR is possibly the monitor for you. Now, this is an expensive piece of kit, but it is delightful in a number of ways. And this is an unboxing video and a review. I've been using this for a couple of weeks, and it has been a challenge, I'll admit, because I've come from a Samsung Odyssey G9 49-inch ultra-wide monitor down to a 24-inch monitor for the purposes of this test. And review and it has been quite an adjustment to have such a small panel however there are some really interesting highlights to it and it comes with a mouse or at least mine did and that is the Asus ROG Chakram Core which I've been using alongside the Logitech Super Light, and I'll be talking to you a bit more about that later on to show off the reflex analyzer that's built into it but for now I'm going to be talking about the technology and the design highlights, which include a very nice minimalistic stand, which doesn't take up a great deal of room on the desk and a panel that results in a really nice look and feel. As you saw from the clips at the beginning, it has a really nice display to it. Great viewing angles, good color accuracy. And this is something that's been covered by a lot of other reviewers. And I'll link to the Linus Tech Tips video if you're interested in seeing the color accuracy and also whether 360 hertz matters. That's not something I'm going to be talking about in this video. But Linus has done an interesting video on whether 360 hertz versus 144 hertz or 240 hertz actually makes any difference that people would notice with some blind tests on that. That was pretty interesting watching. I'd recommend checking that out. But what I'm going to focus on is the design aesthetics of it and also that reflex analyzer because that's something that hasn't gone into a lot of depth on elsewhere but I think it's particularly interesting if you're looking for an esports display and one that's designed to give you the edge over the competition. So the installation setup process is fairly straightforward. As I said nice little stand you'll notice it isn't too deep so if you've got a small desk this is going to be ideal. It's a 24 inch virgin on 25 inch monitor with a very small stand that doesn't take up too much room behind the back. It also has a really nice overall design aesthetic to it that you'll see here. It also turns on its stand as well so you can use it in landscape or portrait layout as well and I'll show you that again in a second as well. It also has a number of connection options including HDMI and display port and I'll leave all the specifications in the description so you can check them out. Including the box you also get a number of stickers and the setup guide, basically quick start guide and the process for setting it up and frustratingly a non-British plug, which is quite an annoyance for me. Yeah, again, another adapter required. Now, the rear of the panel you'll see has a really nice design to it, which I always find a bit odd because not many people are going to end up seeing the back of this, but it has the Asus ROG logo on it. And you'll notice on the left hand side, which will be the right when it's turned around the right way, a number of different buttons for controlling the menu system. I hate this design with those number of buttons. I prefer the Samsung Odyssey lineup for having a single control stick to lay to access the menu, but you basically have to put your hand behind there and then you have a joystick at the top that you can use to go between the menu system and a variety of other buttons for changing various different settings on it. I'm going to show off some of the settings on this a little bit later on, but I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth but one thing I will note is that it does have HDR10 compatibility and has a 360 hertz refresh rate. 
and a number of other settings that you can customize within there, including an eSports setting specifically that works alongside the latency analyzer to give you the best response when you're playing games and you're getting serious. And interesting that basically the one mouse will plug into the monitor and a bit more on that in a minute. But as you see, a really nice looking finish to it. It's got a ridged effect on the left hand side and another nice bit of the logo-y goodness on the right hand side. And as I said, this turns on the stand so you can move it in and position it the way you want it to. So if you have several of these, if you had ridiculous amounts of money to burn a hole in your pocket, you could position them in a variety of ways and it's really easy to do so. It also has a sort of cable tidying system at the bottom, which I'll show you in a second. And included in the box, you get a HDMI and DisplayPort cables. Although, because mine was a review unit, someone else had nabbed the DisplayPort cable, which is a bit of a frustration. I will note that you get the best results if you use DisplayPort. And that's because I found, at least I didn't work out a way around this, but I found installing it and using it, using the HDMI cable, I found that I could only get up to 144 hertz in the in Windows and within the NVIDIA control panel. So although you can see me using HDMI here, I actually went to DisplayPort when using a different machine. And I did use it on two different machines. So I used it on a Zeus Tough laptop that I happened to also be testing, and then on my main desktop with a 3060 Ti graphics card. And obviously trying to run games up to 360 hertz, 300 FPS is pretty taxing. So you need to make sure you have the equipment to be able to do that. Now at the rear, you'll see there is the DisplayPort and HDMI connections. There is also a USB pass-through connection with USB type B to type A that you plug into your PC. Then on the right hand side, you can see there are two USB ports, one of which is required to plug your mouse into it. So you plug the USB pass-through system in and then you plug your mouse into the monitor rather than into your PC. And there's an important part of this because this is what's used for the latency analyzer. And that's one of the most interesting things about this monitor and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But there is also a nag with that in that when you're not using it in that certain mode for the latency analyzer, your mouse stops working, which was uh, quite a frustration for me, which meant I ended up having two mice on my desk constantly. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. But one of the things you can see is that when it's in that mode, you'll note that the 144 hertz or 360 hertz or whatever hertz your screen is currently running at is displayed in the top left of the screen and that's constantly there which is ideal when you're gaming and you want to check your performance but not so good when you're trying to work on spreadsheets or whatever else a bit of a frustration now here you can see a taste of things to come you'll note on the left hand side over hertz you'll also notice that there is another gauge which is telling me my latency and the measurement and on the right hand side, I have a performance analyzer set up with an NVIDIA GeForce experience. And this is something I covered briefly in another video I did previously on how to boost your FPS overall. But this one is specifically about tracking the latency between your mouse and your system. So measuring the time it takes for you to click your mouse and the response to that happening in the game. So in, in other words, the muzzle flash from your weapon and the weapon firing. And that has some really interesting consequences a bit later on. But you can also see that the monitor works for a number of different games. So I played a multitude of different games on here. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Rainbow Six Siege, Dirt 5, and a variety of other things too, including Cuisine Royale, which is obviously a solid favorite of mine. But you can see that obviously this monitor isn't designed necessarily to run these sorts of games. So Assassin's Creed is pretty taxing. This is on maximum settings. And you can see I'm barely pushing 60 hertz. So if you're thinking of buying this monitor and are going to be running games on ultra settings, then you're probably not making the most of that 360 hertz refresh rate. So it's pretty important to ensure you're purchasing the right monitor for you because you're probably wasting your money if you're purchasing it for that. What you want to be doing is playing games that are that high end esports thing that don't require loads and loads of processing power. And you can get the maximum amount of FPS out of them. That said, it still looks great and you can see from a multitude of angles that it's actually really good in terms of the color representation and the overall view of it. As I said earlier, it does HDR10, which is one thing, but it has a really good contrast ratio. It's really good in terms of the color gamut that it returns and the 
look and feel of it as well. Another thing that I like is there's a multitude of settings to switch between various different color settings and um, settings for specific games to give you the best possible view in those games as well. So you can tweak that on the fly. You can also take out the blue light if you're using it during the day and reduce that too. Now, when you're playing something like Rainbow Six Siege, you can take advantage of that fast refresh rate, but you can also use the latency analyzer. So what I'm going to show you in a second is how to set that up. So basically what we're going to do is dive into that now. So when you have your mouse plugged in in the correct way, you can then turn in the latency analyzer. It's the first setting. You'll see G-Sync processor NVIDIA reflex analyzer, and you can set it to various settings. And then you can set it to display that on the screen. You'll notice that it also detects that the mouse is plugged in and enabled. And then you can do various things, including setting the overdrive, changing the game visuals and other things. You can see what I was talking about earlier on in here. And you can also have a real time FPS counter so you can monitor the current performance and making sure you're getting as close as possible to those levels. The idea of the NVIDIA Reflex Analyzer is to essentially, it has a bit of technology within the screen that allows it to track the click, to monitor the click from your mouse that is then passed from the mouse and into the monitor and then measure the flash on the screen that represents the muzzle flash from your weapon to show that there's been an action in the game. This then allows you to minimize system latency and to optimize the experience to ensure that you cut down on the amount of latency within your system to then ensure that you're more accurate and outshoot the enemy. Now, NVIDIA has an interesting video demonstrating how this works, which compares 60 hertz, 144 hertz and 360 hertz screens. And I'll show that in the description I'll link to that. But basically the setup process for it is really straightforward. Now, first thing to do is to make sure that you have your screen set to the right refresh rate. So we want to make sure it's set to 360 hertz within Windows. So right click on your desktop and go to the advanced settings and set the refresh rate in there. Alternatively, you can go into the NVIDIA control panel and again, make sure you've got the right refresh rate set. It's also worth noting this is a 10 bit screen, so you can also adjust the colors to have 10 bit showing and to enable G-Sync because it is a G-Sync compatible display. So doing these things, you can maximize the results that you're getting as well. Another thing to do is to go into the 3D settings and look for the low latency mode and make sure that's set to ultra. When you're within the right games, you can then make the most of NVIDIA Reflex by turning that on. It is worth noting that the list of games supported by the Reflex Analyzer and by Reflex in general is quite short at the moment. I'll leave a link in the description what lists all those games that are supported. But the ones that I'm going to be showing in this video are Rainbow Six Siege and Overwatch. And there are sort of two levels for NVIDIA Reflex and basically have NVIDIA Reflex, which turns on the boost and you don't necessarily require a monitor like this. And then there's the Reflex Analyzer, which requires a monitor with 360 hertz and with the analyzer built in. And then it also requires a mouse of the right type. So I mentioned the Chakram Core from Azus. There's also the Logitech Superlight and there are a number of other mice that are included on the list. And again, I'll link in the description so you can find out more about those. But basically, you require the right mouse in order to run it. Now, once you've got all those things set up within NVIDIA's GeForce Experience software, you can then activate the experimental features and turn on a HUD, which shows you both performance and latency settings. You can see if you go into this, you can activate advanced settings and you can also get a latency setting. You'll see that this display then shows in the right hand side in the top right and that can then be used to keep an eye on things like your PC latency, system latency and mouse latency. You can see all those listed on that side there. And what that does is in the right game with the right settings, you can then track the overall latency of your system and it will account for that and give you the best possible performance. Again, it requires the right software to do it. Again, once you're in a game like Rainbow Six Siege, in this case, you do need to make sure you've got your refresh rate set to the right level and that you also turn on NVIDIA Reflex low latency settings in here too. 
and you can do that pretty easily, but not all games support it. For example, at the time of posting this video, it's supported within Rainbow Six Siege, but only in the test server. And same goes for Overwatch as well. So it's slowly being rolled out and tested, and they're making sure that you can they can implement it in a straightforward way. So you activate the NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer within the settings of the monitor itself. So you turn that on, and what that does is it basically puts a small block that you can see appearing on the screen in the right position. It's important to turn on the G-Sync Esports mode as well because this ensures the right settings are activated. You can also see in the top right of this that you've got the display port set up and it's at 360 hertz refresh rate. The mouse has been detected by the system so it knows it's plugged in and ready to go. You can then set it to PC and display latency so it will register what the display is and then you can get the monitoring rectangle so you can see there's a gray square on my screen here and that is essentially used for the tracking of seeing when your action happens so as i said it tracks basically when you click your mouse it looks for the muzzle flash from your weapon so in this what we're going to do is adjust the position of that analyzing square to be over the right place obviously you want to position it over your pistol in this case and get it over the muzzle so that it can then detect the flash from the weapon and then register the difference between when you click your mouse and when the action is actually seen in the game one of the things that are worth knowing for example is that depending on where you're aiming and what gun you're using can actually make a difference to where the muzzle point is so you see if you aim down the sight you obviously reposition where that gun is and another problem I found is with Rainbow Six Siege, you don't actually see the muzzle flash. But within Overwatch, they've developed a clever option to counter this and actually to work with that system to adjust for the fact that it, the weapon isn't necessarily always going to be in the same position. So in the settings, and again, this is on the test server, so it's not currently rolled out for the entire game. But in the settings, you can set it and turn on a flash indicator. So what that does then is it puts a little box on the left hand side of the screen so if you look on the left hand side of the screen as i'm in the training area you'll see there's a white box flashing up that essentially is the same as having the muzzle flash appear on your weapon so if even if you don't have a weapon that has a muzzle flash that little screen is flashing up with the white box on it you can put the latency analyzer box over that white square and that will then track the latency on that so essentially what we're doing here is when we click the mouse that box then flashes up white that is then tracked by the latency analyzer and that data is then pushed into NVIDIA GeForce Experience and it's shown here on the right hand side in the performance overlay you can see mouse latency for example is around somewhere between 0.5 milliseconds and 1 millisecond around that and again it's important to note that this is really early stages so I think this technology is potentially really interesting but it's not implemented in everything and for example in something like Rainbow Six Siege, what it does is it also tracks the color changes in the environment. So it could get confused if you had that block and it was too large. So something like a flashbang going off or a change of brightness in the room. Um, for example, someone else's muzzle flash, a fire, a flashbang, something like that might overpower it. So the way that it's implemented in Overwatch might be more useful and hopefully they'll do something similar with Rainbow Six Siege in the future. But this is one of the most interesting things of this monitor in my mind. Yes, it's a fantastic monitor. It's a really fast refresh mate monitor with some great settings on it. And it's a potentially really powerful. It's also been great fun to play on, I must say. I'm not usually into monitors of this size. I prefer them to be a bit larger. However, obviously being compact, it is able to push those pixels at the right speed in order to get you a decent FPS. And the result is a really fast smooth experience with g-sync and everything else turned on but the highlights is definitely the technology and as this starts to roll out and be adopted by more developers and come into more games hopefully it will improve the overall experience whether it will make you a more pro though remains to be seen it certainly has made a little bit of difference to my abilities check them out here check out the links in the description and be sure to let me know if you've got any comments thanks for watching I mean, we've got problems. We are surrounded. Well, oh. shit. You got problems. You yeah. are surrounded. Starting time. 
haven't even moved. I need to reload. One friendly remaining. Did not kill my fucking ally. Enemy drone is coming in for a scan. Oh, uh. So I think I no, saw someone good. putting that mark down below. Tron, I'm watching the room on B, so don't worry about him coming in, in from from that room. I will holler if somebody shows up. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.